Hi, everyone. I hope you had a fantastic summer. I know I did. And welcome back to this channel on YouTube. And I want to start the whole year, this new year, which is the new school year, by actually focusing on weight loss and actually explaining why I don't label myself as a weight loss coach, but rather as a cravings coach. Uh, because a lot of people actually um, present themselves, introduce myself as a weight loss coach, and I never do that. So I'm going to explain why I don't do that, why I'd rather focus on crushing food cravings, controlling food cravings, rather than just focusing on weight loss and how much more rewarding, in my opinion, focusing on food cravings is compared to weight loss. I've got a whole set of arguments that I'm super happy to share with you. And so the idea is that I'm going to challenge the whole notion of weight loss, not to be provocative, but to make sure that if you do want to lose weight, which is completely fair, but at least you do know why you're doing it, usually we do, <laughs> but especially if you like your reasons, which I think is the most important thing, so that it actually creates the long lasting results that you do want. Because if your reasons, reasons, sorry, are not serving you, then chances are that you may not lose the weight or you may do so, but unfortunately what happens very often, gain it back very, very fast. Unfortunately, we know that happens a lot. So with this series of um, videos, I really want you to think about what you really want. Is it weight loss? Is it health? Is it self-control? Is it happiness? And then I want you to go and get it, because why not? So I'm just going to share my honest opinion with you so that you can get to know yourself much better, so that you can make up your mind as to what you want, get really clear on that, on that destination you want to go towards. And actually, it's going to make it so much easier for you to go to and to actually get. All right, so let's start. So I'm going to start with um, the reasons why people actually introduce myself as a weight loss coach, why I should perhaps call myself as a weight loss coach. So um, it makes perfect sense that people would present me, introduce me as the weight loss coach because I've got two weight loss certifications. By that I mean I was certified through the Life Coach School, um, which um, certifies uh, their clients, their students as life coaches and also as weight loss coach coaches. So I am um, a weight loss coach. I've been trained. I've coached lots of people on weight loss via uh, the Life Coach School. So yes, I am a weight loss, weight loss coach. And then I was super interested in Colin Crabtree's uh, No BS membership. So if you don't know her, she's uh, also certified via the Life Coach School and she's got a whole program on weight loss, which she calls No BS. Um, and I really wanted to get her perspective, which is a bit different from the Life Coach School, uh, and see how she helps her people. So it makes perfect sense that Yes, indeed, having two weight loss certifications, uh, this advanced training by the NoBS University from Corinne Crabtree's program, people would present me as a weight loss coach. And also I've helped lots of clients, as I said, losing weight. And for instance, examples that spring to mind are Kay, let's call Kay, who was able to button up her a blouse that she hadn't worn since her last pregnancy and it had been three years. So she was delighted. It was just before summer. She was thrilled to be able to go to the beach with the usual friends she went to. She went there with and not being as embarrassed and comfortable around their ideal bodies as she would describe them and also feel so confident in her own skin. So I was really happy to help her do that. There's also Suzanne. Uh, Suzanne says that she no longer eats the chocolate that uh, she would regularly eat on a daily basis. I think she was telling me at some point that she would eat a whole chocolate bar, which is 100 grams, roughly. She's from Europe. And, um, and since our last call, she has 
no longer rich for the chocolate. And she's thrilled because that was a goal for her for a very long time. I know she she really struggled to get there and she did finally. So we all know that when you stop eating rich food, foods, of course, if you don't uh, compensate by eating another form of eat of rich food, of course you're going to lose weight. So that's what happened to her and that was a huge win for her. I'm so thrilled for her. Then there's also S who says she lost the weight and feels so much happier. And we know that yes, when we achieve a goal, very often we're thrilled, we're excited, we're proud, we feel accomplished, we feel amazing. So I'm so happy that I helped them actually reach their goal. Um, and usually, yes, people want to lose weight to be healthier, which is what, um, yeah, we hear that a lot and there's no problem there. Um, but it's so interesting how we may not actually lose weight and be healthy. It doesn't have to go together. So that's what I'm going to talk about. But also they want to lose weight to be happy. Um, but it's interesting. There's this focusing on either the outside, the appearance, the looks, and focusing on the inside. And I'm going to talk about that. So to start starting today, why don't I market myself, don't I introduce myself as a weight loss coach, but rather as a cravings coach? The first reason uh, is weight. So to put it simply, and I'm going to develop that idea, but I don't think there's anything wrong with your weight or your body size. So you may say, well, you don't know my weight. You don't know my body size. You don't know my body shape. You don't know that. So how can you say that? Okay, great. What I do know is that you probably see a certain number on the scale. You probably dress in clothes that are size, depending on where you are on earth, because here in France, it's very different in Eng from England. It's very different from China. It's very different from the US. So depending on where you are located in the world and also what shop you go to, um, you're going to dress in size zero, in size 48, in size L, or whatever sign or you can see on the label, right? So there's going to be a sign on the label of your clothes, right? There's also a number that's going to appear when you measure your body, maybe your waist, maybe your thigh, maybe your hips, maybe your whatever. <laughs> there's going to be a number on the tape if you measure your, um, your body, right? And um, all these, the number you see on the scale, the number you see on the labels of your clothes, the number you see on the tape, those are numbers. They determine the space you take in the world, but also how you interact with the surface of the earth. So for instance, on a chair, how the chair look, what the chair looks like when you sit on the chair. Two different weights, are going to have a different reaction on the chair. That's it. That's what the number actually, the, the number that you see somewhere, that's actually the impact of the number on the earth, right? The place you take and the impact of the number on an object. That's it, right? And then the second piece, which is really interesting, is that we can choose, we don't know it's a choice, but it is, we can choose to feel however we want when we think about that space, about the impact, about the number, right? On the scale, on the label, wherever. We can choose to feel disgusted, for instance, or angry, or sad, or ashamed, or guilty when we see those numbers. Lots of people do. I know I was certainly feeling all the feelings when I was noticing the number on the scale. And very often I was mad at myself and grumpy all day long because I had seen a number that I didn't like. A number that meant my weight I had increased from the previous day or I didn't, hadn't gone down, gone down as I expected it to, right? But the fascinating thing is that the way we feel has absolutely nothing to do with the number we see on the scale, if we focus on that example. Whether it's uh, the number on the tape, whether it's on the scale, whether it's on the dress, the way we feel about the number has actually nothing to do, believe me, I'll explain to you, has nothing to do with the number we see, right? 
we have a feeling, we feel a feeling. It's really true for us. No problem there. And it has nothing to do with the number we've just said, right? We feel disgusted, angry, sad, shame, guilt, because we're interpreting this number as perhaps not good enough. Or we're interpreting our body, we're giving it a meaning for our body that it's ugly, right? Or even we make it mean something about us, as I was, like I failed. Between yesterday and today, I failed. So what made super sense for me was I'm a failure, right? So basically we see numbers and we see numbers as a problem. We make our body based on those numbers as a problem, right? We decide the number is a problem, our body is a problem, or weight is a problem, or shape is a problem, or size is a problem. And it makes perfect sense because we are encouraged on a regular basis by society to see those numbers as a problem if they don't meet some standards, if they don't yeah, fit the standards in our society, right? The thing is that when we tell ourselves we failures because of our weight, because of our size, then chances are we don't feel good, right? As I said, we can feel disgusted, angry, sad, ashamed, guilty, not the most pleasant experience, right? And as we do feel this way, these unpleasant feelings, what do we do? So for instance, if we feel disgusted, if you're anything like me, we tend to avoid looking at what we consider the source of the disgust, or body. And we certainly don't treat it them well. I know that for myself, I had lots of punishing thoughts that, okay, you're not behaving the way I want you to, so I'm not going to look at you, I'm not going to treat you well. No, not at all. So that was when I was feeling disgusted. When we feel angry, very often we tend to blame. I know I would have a long list of grievances for my body, not being the right one or not being willing to cooperate with me to make me look better and let me feel better about myself. And when we feel sad, or at least when I feel sad, I tend to just want to feel sorry for myself and just crumple and binge watch TV shows all afternoon, right? The most common thing we do when we feel shame is blush and we want to hide so that maybe we make ourselves smaller in the world and we isolate ourselves from other, other people. And the common point with all these emotions, whether it's disgust, anger, sadness, shame, guilt, is that they're uncomfortable emotions. And another common point is that when we feel those unpleasant, uncomfortable emotions, that we don't want to feel them. We want to run away from them. We want to feel better immediately, but certainly not pay attention to them. And when we don't want to pay attention to them, we turn our attention to something else, preferably something that gives us pleasure, that makes us feel better, even if, it for, if it's for a split second. Namely, we usually go towards the food, comfort food, the ones that are actually rich and that are probably going to contribute to the whole cycle again. So when we feel disgust, anger, sadness, shame, guilt, we tend to obey our food cravings more easily and we overeat. Notice that as a result from feeling disgust, anger, sadness, shame, guilt, we create even more reasons for ourselves to feel those very same emotions, right? The disgust, the anger, the sadness, etc. It's like a vicious cycle, cycle or circle, whatever you want. And it's all coming from our opinion about numbers we've seen, not from the numbers per se, right? From our opinion or interpretation of the numbers, very different things right? The numbers can't make us feel anything. The numbers can't make us do anything like eat, overeat, right? It's impossible. A number is a sign that our elders decided to, to use to describe a reality. It means something very specific. If I do this, you understand it's two and you know exactly what it represents, right? But then we may interpret this as good or bad. And this is where it gets subjective. If I say two, it's subjective. Everybody on earth agrees that two is two. That means two items, right? But if I say it's good or bad, some may argue, oh yes, good. Some may think, mm -mm, no, bad, right? Very different. It depends on so many other things. 
right? So there's the factuality of the number, it's objective, and then there's the, the opinion, the interpretation of the number. It's totally different. Can you see that? So here's my unconventional opinion about weight. Your weight is not a problem. Your body size is not a problem. Your body shape is not a problem. The size of your clothes is not a problem. None of these numbers or signs are problems, unless we make them so, right? So the questions I want you to ask yourself today are the following ones. First, is your weight a problem, right? Either yes or no. Maybe it's a bit of both. That's even more interesting. And then, if it is a problem, if your weight is a problem, who is it a problem for? Is it a problem for you? Is it a problem for your mum? Is it a problem for your partner? Is it a problem for your best friend? Is it a problem for your neighbor? Is it a problem for a total stranger, right? And then the last question I want you to ask yourself is, if it's a problem, why is it a problem? Why is it a problem for me if it is? Why is it a problem for other people, right? I want you to be super curious about that because you're going to uncover a wealth of information. So I'm really inviting you to think about those three questions so that you get to see what you're currently thinking, first of all, about you on this planet, right? The space you're taking on the planet, the impact your body has on the planet. Because guess what? If you don't like what you're thinking, you're absolutely free to change the way you think about your body and your weight. Seriously. If you need to, you have my complete permission to think whatever you want about your body, your body size, your body weight. Nobody will ever know if you don't want them to know your honest opinion, your perhaps revised opinion, your updated opinion about your body, right? And if you do want people to know, there's no problem either. You get to decide what you want to do about your own opinion about your own body. If you want to let me know about what you uncover, well, yes, please send me a message either on Instagram, DM me at nan.cezanet.coaching or directly uh, via my email, which is nscoaching at outlook.fr, right? And you can also have a third option, which is to book your Crave Consult, your Crave Control Consultation call, right? Uh, so that we uncover together what your dream relationship with your body, with your weight, with your size would be like. It's so much fun. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you very soon. Take care, bye.